ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد I welcome all of you and we continue reading from Al-Ajwib Al-Mufida on As'ilat Al-Manahij Al-Jadida Beneficial Answers to Questions on Innovative Methodologies of our noble Shaykh Al-Allam Al-Dr. Salih Al-Fawzan bin Fawzan حفظه الله تعالى وغفر له ولوالديه وللمسلمين والمسلمات. It's a very important class of manhaj for us to know the principles of these innovative methodologies, the things they use and the tricks and the falsehood they use and spread among the Muslims. Because we are commanded to adhere to that which the Prophet ﷺ left the companions upon. That's what we are ordered. We are ordered to follow what Allah has revealed, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are commanded as Muslims to adhere to the Qur'an, the Book of Allah, and to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa with the understanding of the Salah And this is not going to happen except if we learn from the noble scholars, from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah. And we should be aware of learning from the people of innovation and the people who are upon innovative methodologies. We don't seek knowledge from them. That's why the ulama, they warn against. And they do it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslims from deviating away from the path of Allah. They don't do it because just for no reason. That's Ahlul Ahwa, the people who follow desires, the Hizbis, the Mubtadi'a, the innovators. That's what they say. They say these people got nothing to do. I got nothing to do with just talking about the people, this guy is this, this guy is that. And they say Muslims are killed everywhere and they're still talking about uh, this person calling upon the grave, that shirk, and this is a lot. And they forget that if a person is killed and upon Tawheed, that's good for him. But if a person, what about those who are killed upon shirk? They think that that's what's good, what's going to get them closer to Allah. So Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah, they follow the manhaj of the prophets in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Manhaju al-anbiya fi da'wa ila Allah. Wa yatakayyaduna bilal. And they restrict themselves to that. They don't come up with things of themselves. They don't change principles because of the people who want this or want that. Now they teach the people the fundamental principles of Islam. Even if some people don't want it, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah al-Jama'ah, they continue teaching the people that which is right. Like it or like it, and hate it who hate it. And they continue to call the people to the book of their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to hold on firm to it, and to the Sunnah of our noble Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and with the understanding of a salaf salih And with that they warn against innovations. They call the people to be as one, the Muslims, not because of their colors or their language, but because of the aqidah. Their manhaj has to be one. They call the Muslims to be one jama'ah. One jama'ah upon that which the Prophet ﷺ was upon and his companions. 
And since there is only one saved sect, one victorious group, and who are they? It has nothing to do with their colors or their nationalities. They hold them firm to what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was upon his companions, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said himself in a hadith. <coughs> but with that, they warn against those deviant sects and innovative methodologies who the Prophet sallallahu he said they are in a hellfire because they oppose his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 73 sects, 72 of them in the hellfire except one. One. So we have to make that one, but we need to know who they are. Otherwise, if we don't know who they are, we don't know their principles, their characteristics, clearly, that's why Ahl al they spread their falsehood. You think the people of Bida, when they call to the Bida, they say, look, let me warn you, Akhi, because look, what we're going to call you is from the 72 sex, and the Prophet said, no, no, they claim the haqq. Everybody claimed that they are the one who are upon the truth. They are the one that are right. Well, yeah, they be mad. That's where they get tricky. But alhamdulillah, the path of Allah is clear. There is no ambiguity in it. I have to mention this introduction because, as you see in the footnotes, uh, for those people who are not familiar with the manhaj and knowing this importance, because some laymen, some Muslims, they're like, why are you talking about other Muslims? Why? Just leave them alone, the Muslims. Ah, no, you have to warn against their evil, because they call into innovations. Some of them call to shirk. Who wants to die upon shirk? If someone they upon shirk, no salat, no fasting, no zakat will benefit them. You see how dangerous it is? I know. Can you imagine if, subhanAllah, it's amazing. We give an example. Can you imagine if someone have a restaurant somewhere and he run out of chicken and he sells pork. He cut it into pieces and sell it like it's a chicken kebab. And soak it in barbecue and this and that. If someone knows what he's going to be quiet, or when he warned the people, you think they're going to say, hey, be quiet, he's a Muslim, you know, supposed to say, he sell pork or whatever, that's between him and Allah. Don't, don't tell the people, huh? They said that's, that's deception, right? Mm-hmm. That's cheating. Right. What about the ones who cheat them in their religion? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. And the one who cheat them, the one who t- try to take them away from the only path. Mm-hmm. He ain't no shortcuts when he comes to this one. There's one path. So that's why you find the ulama, jazakumullah khairan. It doesn't matter what other people said about them. Like Sheikh Fawzan, Sheikh Bin Baz, Sheikh Nazimin, Sheikh Muqbil, Sheikh Rabi'ah, Hafidullah, who are his most hated. Him and Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahimahullah. They're one of the most hated people in our times. And the ulama, they mentioned Sheikh Luhaydan most recently. Sheikh Saleh al Luhaydan, Hafidullah. They said, why? Why the people of Bida, they talk about Sheikh Rabi and warn against him? He says, because he shows clearly their misguidances. He refutes their, their, their falsehood. That's why they attack him. That's good for him. Alhamdulillah. So I'm going to read the footnote. It's going to be only English because the foot, this footnote is, is long. He says in this footnote, he said, someone may say, why do you talk about the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, the Zanadiqa, the Ash'aris, the Khawarij, and the Murji'a? And always mention them when speaking about issues of creed, Aqeedah. When these groups have ceased to exist and its adherents have died out. Okay? As the saying goes, they have been consumed by time. Okay? So there is no reason to mention them. See, that's what they say. That's a shubha. So the shubha say, why are you talking about the khawarij? Khawarij in the time of Ali? It's like over a thousand years. He's still talking about the khawarij? Mm-hmm. We're talking about Murjia. It's like over 1200 years. Why are you still talking about them? Those people died long time ago. But our response is and with Allah lies the success yes this sex existed in the past and their followers and founders have died 
have died out ages ago. However, you see, however, their ideologies still prevail. See? And their beliefs have not come to an end. Rather, the followers of these ideas and beliefs who have been influenced by these groups are still present amongst us today. That's why the ulama they warn against, because it's present amongst the people. Yes, the founders of the Khawaris, the founders of Murjia, they died a long time ago. Nobody can say that the founder of Jahmiya, he's the one who's still sending Twitters and text messages. No. But there are people who are upon the same innovative methodology, they're causing fitan in this time. So their ideologies and beliefs are passed on from generation to generation. And they have people who continue to pass them on. As for the beliefs of the Mu'tazila, then it is still in existence today. And in fact, it is widely spread amongst those who ascribe to Islam, amongst those who ascribe to Islam. He says, this, this is since the, sh- the, the Shia, in all of their various sects and denominations, even the Zaydis among them, adhere to the beliefs of the Mu'tazila. Shia have many tawami, have many calamities, As for the Ash'aris, then it is a sect that exists in groups amongst a majority of the Muslims today. And, and as for, there's a lot of Muslim countries, countries in Africa, they say they are Ash'aris in Aqidah. They said it, they said they are Malikis in Fiqh. That's what they say. They say they are Malikis in Fiqh, they follow Imam Malik. But in Aqidah, they are on the Aqidah of the Ash'ariyah, the wicked. Why they don't follow Imam Malik on, on Aqidah? That will be better for them. As for the belief of Irja, it can be found also in the Hanafis. The Hanafis who believe that Iman, faith, is just tasdeeq, affirmation, and speech, qawl. That's what Irja means. So actions, according to them, do not fall into the fold of Iman. Do you see how it is? There's a problem. There are people. You tell them, pray. Say, no, 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 no. Iman is in the heart. Have you even met someone like that? No. Huh? You tell them, pray. They're like, no need. Why? Heart, okay. As long as you have Iman in the heart. Well, the Sahaba, they have Iman in their heart. The strong Iman. They pray, they fast. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. The Shaykh, he continues by saying, Even though this irja is of the lesser nature, it is still from the irja of the well-known people of rhetoric, al-kalam. And as for the apostates, such as those who believe in wahdatul wujud and others, then they exist. Yes, they exist today as well. Says the followers of Ibn, Ibn Arabi, so don't mix between these two. We have Ibn al-Arabi, who was upon the Sunnah, and we have Ibn Arabi and Nakira, the Dal. Because the followers of this man, Ibn Arabi, who called to Wahdat al-Wujud, and everything is Allah, and Allah is everything. We ask Allah. Allah. Can be found today, and they are from the extreme Sufis. Yeah, they exist. I know. So, so based on this, when we mention, so when we mention these groups, we are not talking meaning Khawarij, Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, Murji'a, and the like, and Ash'ariya. We are not talking about the actual groups of old, but rather we are talking about the groups that exist among the Muslims today, who adhere to their falsehood and their innovative methodologies. This is something that is not hidden from the students of knowledge. It is only those who are unaware of the realities or those who wish to confuse the people and spread false beliefs that condemn us when we mention these groups. So it is upon such people to ask 
before they condemn. Before they start talking, ask, why are you doing this? Why are you talking about them? Do they still exist? Yes, where? Look, maybe in his country they exist. You see? This is just a short discussion on the matter. But in reality, this topic is vast. And Allah knows best. This is still the brother, uh, the Sheikh uh, Jamal ibn uh, Furayhan al harithi He says, <coughs> I will present some examples below that make it clear that the ideologies of these destructive groups are still present today. Okay, here's the examples. Number one, who you think? Sayyid Qutb. Mm. Sayyid Qutb, who this man, he is, he is the Shaykh al-Islam for the Ikhwan Muslim. That's their main Shaykh. That's their Shaheed. Can't say nothing bad about this man. Eh, if you're around Ikhwan Muslim, you say something bad about this man, <laughs> fear for you, man. They may hurt you, al-Iyadu Billah. This man is so famous amongst them. But let's see now who is this man, Sayyid Qatab, and what does he say, and this and that. He said, number one, as an example, Sayyid Qutb. He said in his book, In the Shade of the Quran, Fi Dilali Al Quran. Look, in the shade of the Quran. Just that, subhanAllah, the Quran has shade. Just in the title itself. In the volume 4, page 2328. This is a famous book among the Ikhwan Muslimun. And the ulama, they said, you don't, you don't read this book. It's a very dangerous book. It has a lot of evil in it. Innovation, shirk, kufr, wahdat al-wujud, wahdat al-adyan. Because this man, Sayyid Qutb, he was not a alim. He was not a student of knowledge. As Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahu wa ta'ala, he praised Shaykh Rabia. Because Shaykh Rabia, subhanAllah, he has many books that refutes the mistakes of this man. Not this man. He never say, oh, he's an Egyptian. This. No, it doesn't matter who he is, what country he's from. Because what he has left behind. And those ignorance among the Ikhwan, Muta'asibun, they don't know that Shaykh Rabia is doing a big favor for this man. Because the less people are following his mistakes, the better for him. They should thank Shaykh Rabia, actually. Instead to call him one name, Sayyid so Qutb in that book, what he says, the Quran is present and in existence just like the earth and the heavens. What does it mean? It's created. <laughs> this is the belief that the Quran is created. You see? This is the belief that the Quran is created. And this is the view of the Jahmiyyah and other divine groups. So who Sayyid Qutb get this from? Jahmiyyah. I forget to complete the statement of Shaykh, Ra- Shaykh Al-Albani because Shaykh Rabi he has refuted this man from his work. Shaykh Rabi He bring the book, the page, the statement itself from the book, copy it and put it in his... And then he will say where he went wrong, this man. And Shaykh Al-Albani, he says, Jazakallah khairan, ayyuh Shaykh Al-Rabi. He says, May Allah reward you plenty, O Shaykh Rabi, for making clear to the Muslims and to the people the many misguidances of this man. And for indeed, he is ignorant of Islam, its principles and its branches. What are you going to say about a man like this? He grew up in the West. Huh? Subhanallah. Number two, he also said in the aforementioned book, 6 slash 4002, while interpreting the statement of Allah, look, with this man, in that book is tafsir, he put it as tafsir, he's, he made the tafsir of the Quran. This man is not a scholar, he's not a student of knowledge, he never studied nowhere, and he gave, he put a tafsir of the Quran. You see? And Ikhwan Muslimun, they push in this book, translating so many languages, pushing it everywhere amongst the laymen and the Muslims. This is what this man says about the statement, his tafsir now, the statement of Allah, Qulhu Wallahu Ahad. Say he is Allah the One. Surah Al-Ikhlas. He says, this indeed, this is Sayyid Qutb, he said, 
This indeed refers to the oneness of existence. The oneness of existence. So there is no reality except for his reality, nor is there a true existence except for his existence. Huh? So, every else, everything else that exists, its existence stems from that actual existence. And what is this? This is the belief of Wahidat al Wujud. Everything is Allah, and Allah is everything. But in Aqid Ahl Sunnah, and Allah is the one who 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 is the a month or two, alhamdulillah, because this is his brother, and he is one of the wicked amongst the Ikhwan Muslimun. He's the one who really put a lot of effort to put the books of his brother out there. Ayyad Billah. Amen. Muhammad Qutb said, The matter requires us to call the people to Islam all over again. All over again. And like there is no Islam. <coughs> All over again, because they have the takfir with them too. He says, the matter requires us to call the people to Islam all over again. Not because this time they reject saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with their mouth, as the people during the first stage of strangeness would do, but because the people during this time reject the main requisite of La ilaha illallah, which is judging by the by the legislation of Allah. This is Al-Hakimiyyah. That's all. They want the Hakimiyyah according to what they believe. You see? And this is quoted from the book Our Current Situation, page 29. Sheikh Jamal for al Hafi, he says, I say, this is declaring the masses to be disbelievers, in the absolute sense. If this is not so, then how can he judge that the people reject Allah's legislation? Hmm? And how can he liken them to the days of ignorance prior to Islam without going into detail or making exceptions for those who do in fact implement Allah's legislation and who have no cons constitution except the book of Allah? These kinds of general statements are oft repeated by these writers as if they don't acknowledge the existence of the huge Salafi, Salafi Islamic State located in the heart of Arabia. It is as if they don't acknowledge the existence of Muslims in various other regions that are from the followers of Hadith, supporters of the Sunnah, and adherents to the beliefs of the Salaf. And unfortunately, this man, Muhammad Qutb, he was sheltered in Saudi Arabia. And that's where he live, and that's where he study, and that's where he teach in Jamiat al Qura, make a good living, and still talk. Like they say, the statement, they, he bites the hand there, and feed him. The strange thing is that these people, or some of them, were living in the Islamic State, like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, at the time they made such statements, now, which contain grave deception for the readers such that an average person is led to believe that there can there cannot be found an islamic state today that profess la ilaha illallah implementing its requisites and ruling by allah's laws and it leads the reader to believe that there cannot be found any individuals or groups that adhere to tawhid on the face of this earth is it this is deceiving, misleading, and deluding to the readers. The student of knowledge should take note of this phenomenon that is widespread among these types of writers. May Allah guide them to what is correct. Amen. Amen. Number four, he says, one of those who ascribe themselves to the da'wah said, from the outward display of sins, is when a person boasts about his sins in front of his colleagues. Okay? So, he begins to speak aloud, saying he did such and such, and went into details about many of his sins. 
This kind of person will not be forgiven. Look what he said. If someone talk about his sins, they bring this ruling, this person will not be forgiven. Who said, did Allah say that? Do they have a text from the Quran from the Sunnah? Unless he repents, because the Prophet ﷺ ruled concerning him that he will not be pardoned. Everyone from my Ummah will be pardoned except for those who outwardly profess their evil. They say, what is worse and viler than this is when some of them say, I have unlawful relations, or I have girlfriends, or I go on dates, because some people, they, they say things, ignorant Muslims, they go to another country and say they, they have these things. This person, they say, still the quote of these people, he says, this person is filled with sins. Some of these people even record sins on tapes. There is no honor for these people since they are apostates by doing this. See, that's why they, they bring rulings from themselves. They record how to entice a girl and give her to commit lewd acts, etc. They say, this person who they say, they say they, this, unfortunately, people who say stuff, they say they are upon that with the Levia, Celebi. So this, they said, that person said, this is apostasy from Islam. This person who records this will be in the fire of hell forever unless he repents. And this is from a tape called A Gathering on the Platform. Look at, look at the name. You find Sheikh Ben Baz, Al Aqid al Sahih, <laughs> Sheikh Fawzan, uh, Al Tawheed, the importance of Tawheed, the benefits, Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, the benefits of Taqwa, Sheikh Rabi, uh, avoid Shirk. And then, then look, look at the tape, a gathering on the platform. And with regard to some of the sinners, singers, who, whose tapes are spread around by the youth, huh? tapes which call to filthiness and which delude the, the young boys and girls, he said, this man said, I am certain that the person who does this act, the least that can be said about him is that he takes sins lightly. And there is no doubt that belittling a sin, especially if it is a major sin, that the scholars have unanimously agreed on as to its prohibition, constitutes disbelief in Allah. Somebody who sells music tapes, they say this belief. So there is no doubt that the actions of the likes of these people are apostasy from Islam. Look at this people. These people, they say they do art and colors. I say this with a tranquil and calm heart, this man said. He said that the one who sells tape, music tapes, this man said, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. No, that's disbelief. And he's saying it with what? A tranquil and calm heart. Let me be sure and certain. And this is from the tape, the youth questions and issues. I hear one of the Messiah said, mentioned once, Allah. You see how people actually their corrupt understanding lead them to say calamities. This man, he have this food like Walima, and he invited the people to his house. And among those people was this sheikh, the sheikh at that time, some sheikh, you know. So he's the main person in, in the walima, in the gathering. So that brother, mashallah, he took care of them. He took care of them, feed them nicely. And there is a habit in that area, in that village, that when the people, they, of course, they leave their shoes outside. Not we walk on the carpet and everything. They leave all their shoes outside by the door. And people, they just come and put their shoes, like one shoe's in here. Like. But there is a custom that one of the boys, the children of that man, the host, before the people are about to leave, he will go and strengthen the, the uh, shoes and the sandals facing the other direction. So it will become easy for the people. They just come and put their feet. Huh? Easy. 
But for whatever reason, that boy, he, he didn't do one. He keep it like the other direction. And he was that of the sheikh. The sheikh, he came out and he see that every... Because they know that tradition. He saw that all of the sandals are being taken care of, except for his. He got mad and angry. He said, call the person of this house. He just took care of them and fed them. He says, what happened? He says, you're a disbeliever. He says, what? You're a disbeliever. Can you explain? I explain. Because you're mocking the Prophet, and you're mocking the deen. Well, how? You hear me say that? Anybody says, no, by action. So how? Explain. says, look. All the people's shoes are facing this way, except for mine. And that's disrespect for me. And I am a sheikh. And if you're disrespecting me, you're disrespecting the knowledge I have. And if you're disrespecting the knowledge I have, you're disrespecting the Quran and the Sunnah. And so you're a disbeliever. You see how these people actually come with ideas? That's Allah Salaam Alaikum. The Shaykh al Farihani says, I say, declaring sinners to be disbelievers and interpreting the spread and distribution of sins amongst them as being a belittlement of sins which leads to disbelief, shows hastiness in labeling people disbelievers due to major sins. And this is the view of who? The aqidah of who? Khawaj. And now they say, why are you warned against Khawaj? And labeling people disbelievers due to major sins and a lack of showing restraint. This is from the methodology of the Khawaj as they declare people to be disbelievers due to major sins. As for the example he gave of a person mani manifesting his sins and evil relationship with sinners, then this kind of talk shows that these things are probable but do not consist of clear proof. Do not consist of a clear proof. Perhaps the thing that causes the person to do this is ignorance. This is why we must remain, remind them and not declare them disbelievers. Teach them, ya akhi, me. Young Muslims, they just go to Europe or come to America and they see the door open for them. They don't know what to do. They don't know. This is the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Furthermore, he says, this is the way of our Jama'ah, you teach the people, remind them. Don't declare anyone who commits sin, major sin, he's a disbeliever. He says, furthermore, belittling something and, and taking it lightly does not constitute a mockery of it. In fact, everyone that commits a sin, whether major or minor, doesn't do so unless he first considers it trivial and belittles, and belittles it. So someone who takes something lightly doesn't necessarily ridicule it. And who is free from sins? And Allah knows best. Look, he don't bring the names of these guys, but these guys, their names are known among the students of knowledge because they know their statements and their tapes. Another person, number five, an example five, he says, another person said, while asking a question, whilst asking a question and then responding to it, at the same time. You see what I'm saying? He asks a question and answer. He says, Do you think that the evils that are present in our communities today are just sinful matters? Hmm? Many people assume today that... Look, and he now he's going to answer. He says, Many people assume today that interest is just a sin or a major sin. And that drugs and alcohol are sins. And that bribery, rishwa, is just a sin or one of the major sins. Then he says, no doubt, oh brothers. I have looked into this matter. This man, this person, huh, who is influenced by this methodologies, this innovative and false methodologies. Then he says, 
No doubt, O oh brothers, I have looked into this matter, and it has become clear to me now that many people in our societies have made interest lawful <laughs> and refuse is sought in Allah. Did you know that now the interest-based banks in our country have reached 2 million customers? That's what he says. I swear this to you by Allah. He's still saying, okay? I, I hope nobody don't know edit into this one. Does each individual from these millions know that interest is haram, but yet still deals with it even though it is a sin by Allah? So then, from the danger that is present today, due to the vast amount of widespread sins, is that many people have made these major sins permissible and lawful, and we seek refuge in Allah. Who tell him? How he know these people that they are permissible? How, how can this person really say two million people, all of them, who deal with riba, for example, all of them believe that it is permissible? What about the ignorant people who don't know anything? Hmm? What about people, they know it's haram, but they have some problems, you know, they follow on their desires, need to be reminded and educated. And this person uh, is from his tape, Tawheed first. Look, Tawheed first. Ah, then the Shaykh he says, I reply with the same answer I gave in the previous example. However, this example is more dangerous for the one who made this statement, in my understanding. Since in his grave exaggeration, he claims that what occurs in this society such as interest, alcohol, and bribery are not just disobedience or major sins. And he swears by Allah to this, determining that a person who commits a sin deems it permissible. Without hearing from any one of them that they clearly assert interest to be lawful, or dealing with bribes to be lawful, or using drugs and alcohol to be lawful, Meaning, to positively deem these people disbelievers without hearing these statements come from them or having a reliable proof that bears witness that they in fact deem these acts permissible. Because if someone says, look, riba is halal, man. zina is halal, that's act of kufr, you know? So he says, in fact, deems these acts permissible and to, to instead only assume is a clear proof of the weak restraint and lack of consideration this individual has. He says, this is the methodology of the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila. So my advice to him and those like him is to recant from making such general assertions that are more dangerous for them than for others. Turning back to the truth is better than persisting in falsehood. Number six. A third person, he says, who has a doctorate degree in Aqidah, he's a doctor, PhD in Aqidah, said whilst holding in his hand a flyer from a hotel in one of the Gulf states. Okay? And he said, in this hotel, it clearly states that they serve alcoholic drinks. In addition to the other things it has, etc., etc. So this is a clear call to alcohol. And to naked and intermingled dancing was drinking alcohol. We seek Allah's refuge from this disbelief. That's what the man said. And he has a doctrine from this disbelief. Not belief, disbelief. And this man has a doctorate in Aqidah. Okay? From a cassette tape of the explanation of Al Aqidah al Tahawiyya. This man who is explaining Al Aqidah al Tahawiyya. La ilaha illallah. And he said in a book of his. Disbelief and apostasy has appeared in our newspapers. 
evil has spread in our circles and we are called to fornication on our radios and television sets and we have made interest lawful we have made interest lawful the sheikh says this book was prepared and printed with various different titles in Pakistan it went by the title removing the grief from the scholars of the ummah removing the grief from the scholars of the ummah in America it goes by the title what is who knows Kissinger's promise the promise of Kissinger you know that yeah no that's what it is you heard that book right no. Kissinger's word Kissinger and in Egypt the book was titled facts surrounding the Gulf crisis same book different titles and different people for different people the same guy he did this yes now there's another book but this is not uh, you know that's how Allah said I'm going so the sheikh says regardless you have seen how this individual has taken it upon himself to make these statements, such as that we have made interest permissible. Well, who told him that everybody made interest permissible? He says, regardless, you have seen, you have seen how this individual has taken it upon himself to make these statements, such as that we have made interest permissible. But we, all praise be to Allah, do not deem interest as being permissible, nor does our society, <clears throat> nor do we consider distributing alcoholic drinks to some of the neighboring regions as being open disbelief that expels one from the fold of Islam. See? Rather, that which we worship Allah with is that those things mentioned by these individuals that ascribe himself to the da'wah are all sins and not disbelief and not disbelief in fact all of these acts are lesser from form of disbelief i.e. minor disbelief meaning that they are acts of disobedience and major sins that negate the completeness of iman of the person who commits them but not the foundation of iman as the prophet said a fornicator does not fornicate whilst being a believer at the time he fornicates. And a thief does not steal whilst being a believer at the time he is stealing. No doubt the Iman, faith, that is being negated here is the completeness of Iman. Meaning that this sinner does not have complete Iman. Meaning his Iman is deficient while he's doing that. That's the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, that the one, the Muslim who is upon Tawheed and committed major sin that is lesser than shirk, minor, that's major shirk, any sin major that doesn't take a person out of Islam, he's still a Muslim. He still has Iman, but he's deficient. Because those sins, they cause that person's Iman to be deficient, to decrease. In the Sheikh said, there are many more examples of this in our religion. We ask Allah to grant us understanding of our religion and guide these people and their likes to the truth. My dear brother, all you who strive for this Salafi methodology, after seeing these examples of the ideologies present in some of the callers today, not to mention the youth who are deceived by them and who sit in front of them, taking their ideas and beliefs which destroy the creed of the Salaf from them. After seeing all this, would you still say, why do you talk about these groups that have come to an end? When their deviant and corrupt beliefs and methods still exist and their misguidance is still present. So reflect, may Allah guide you, on the importance of Tawheed and of implementing it and warning about all of the deviant groups in every time and place 
and returning back to the methodology of the Salaf as salih in light of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and Allah knows best. Then you have another footnote, number 42 in this book in English, as related to the statement of our noble Shaykh, Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, when he says, I also came across the book of Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, in which he comprehensively refutes this futile claims that, that of muwazanat huh? says he is referring to the book the methodology of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah in criticizing individuals manhaju books and groups manhaj ahl sunnah wal jama'ah fi naqd al rijal wal kutub wal jama'at sheikh rabia it was released in a new format in its second edition and contains several important Additions. We advise the student of knowledge to read it. So this is clearly, I found that was the, the end quote of that. This, this uh, clearly, the Muslim, of course, you got to learn the Aqidah, the Tawheed. you got to uh, make sure that you have knowledge of the Sunnah, of the Book of Allah, the Sunnah, and you adhere to the Book of Allah upon knowledge, not just affiliation, just whatever the people do, you do it with them. You want to see what Allah tells you to do and do it. And you do it and call others who are not doing it. That's the Muslim. The Muslim who wants good for himself and wants good for his brothers. You learn Islam from its proper sources. You adhere to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of as-salaf as-salih and when you are somewhere or around certain people who they are affected by false and innovative methodologies then you have to do something about it number one that knowledge you had will benefit you by not being an easy prey for them and a victim therefore so you have an immunization you see you have your shots okay and number two you try your best to call those people because they're your brothers now as for the innovators and the heads of them you stay away from them you don't have no knowledge, you're not in a level to debate with them, to refute their mistakes, run away from them as the ulama they mentioned. If you see if you see a cat in the street, right? A cat that like meowing and coming at you, meow, what do you do? You run? You run or what? You don't run. You're like, oh, we want to play that game? Come here. And you chase the, the cat and the cat is running now, the cat is running and you run after it, right? All right, but now here's this morning, you're going out and there is this, uh, forget about the lion now, you're going about like, what is this? Pitbull. Pitbull. <laughs> a, a, a healthy pitbull, maybe hungry too. And he come at you and show you one canine, not all four of them. What do you do now? Remember what you did with the cat and run after him? Yeah, right. You're going to find a way, you're going to find a refuge, right? What about with the lion? Ulama, they says of Ahl Sunnah, you see the innovator, run away from him. Some people, they say, oh, we got to go check what's going on. We got to go check him out. And they be checked. <laughs> because some of them, they very eloquent, Akhi. Very eloquent. And here is a person who says, oh, I got to go see, check this guy, man. Why are you talking about this Ikhwani? They go over there, they become his main right hand. And he has so many right hands, these men. Run away from Ahlul Bidah. If you know masjid in your area, or whenever you go, that the Imam of this masjid is a pure Ikhwani, Sufi, Takfiri, whatever he is, you got to run away from him, Ikhwan. Don't sit with them. Don't listen to them. The ulama, these are ulama of the Salaf, not just ulama of this time. When a mubtadi' will come and say, I want to read to you one ayah, he says, not even one word. Later on, 
he, students ask Sheikh, he said one, he said not even one word, why? He says, I'm afraid that something of his innovation may enter into my heart, how am I going to get it out? This is a alim. And some of us, we have the boldness, I'm going to go check them out. No, you run away from the innovators. This is the methodology of the Sunnah, this is the minhaj. Don't go and sit with the Mubtadi. He's a main student of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, Allah give him understanding of the deen. And also he has awareness and knowledge of their deviant path. That person has the, the qualification to go and sit with that person to refute his mistakes. Tell him what you call calling to is wrong. Why? Because of this, of this. How I'm wrong? Because of this, of this, of this. And if he tries to tell him, no, 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 it's not like that, because of this, it's like, oh yeah, you want to follow that route? Okay, continue. You're going to find it closed, and you're going to come back to me. Like Sheikh Al-Bani used to do with them. He let them talk, talk, okay, keep talking. Some of the students said, Sheikh, don't let him. He's going to come back to us. It's like someone who's running from you, right? But he's dead in. I don't know if they have him in here. Back home, where I come from, in the old neighborhoods, in old neighborhoods, you know, they used to do it like this. I don't know if you have it in here. You go in the street, right? And you go in the street for like 10 minutes. And then at the end of the street, what do you find? A house with a door. There's no way out. It's a house. That's it. It's a house. You have to go back. There is only one way in and one way out to the whole neighborhood. One way. There's no other way. So likewise, people who are not from the neighborhood, what do they do? If somebody run that path, they run after him. The people from the neighborhood, what do they do? They wait by the door. Run after him. Run why? He's going to come back. There is no way out. He's going to come back. He's going to drive back this way. Likewise, Ahlul Bida, they can go here and there and there and there. Ahlul Sunnah, they are firm on the haq. They said they're going to come back. People who don't know, they run after them. And why in the midst of running after them, they get lost? You see? So run away from Ahlul Bida, Ikhwan. Ikhwan Muslimun, and Khawarij, and Takfiris, and Ahbash, and all of the Sufis, Tablighis. You run away from them. You don't sit with them. But if you know in your area, in your family, some people regular people like us, but they are affected by these people, these are the people you can talk to, but nicely. With hikmah, with knowledge too, before you talk to them, you have to be prepared. You're not going to expect for someone to say to him, don't go with Jama'at Tabliya. Why? It's in the bed for you. Who wants to take that? Who wants to say, who are you? Who am I to just go to a person and say, don't go with Jama'at Tabliya. Why, Akhi? Because it's bad for you. He may going to say to me now, what bed? Them going all over and knocking doors, Akhi. Why are you sleeping? Why you? I saw you on Duncan down the other day, drinking coffee while they going in the heat, knocking on the door, calling people to Islam. You didn't do that, did you? Do you? So now what are you gonna do now? If you don't know, you're stuck. You're like, really they done that in the heat? Ah, oh, Subhanallah. I'm sorry. You see, now you're sorry for people who be that. No, you need to know where this Jama'at Tabliq, where they went wrong. And don't be deceived by them going out and knocking doors. Since they do not call to the, to the, they don't respect and follow and adhere to the, to the, to the methodology of the prophets in calling to Allah, for their first violation, they don't call to Tawheed. So what call is this? Knocking door, come pray asr. Okay, what about the shirk this person is upon? Is this salah is going to help them? And they bring them to read what? Kitab al-Tawheed, al-Aqid al-Wasitiyya, Talatat al-Sul, no. Fada'il al-A'man. We used to, used to be what? Tablighi Nisab. Used to be Tablighi Nisab, and when the people told them, look, this book is full of falsehood and weak narrations and fabricated, they changed, they said, okay, we're going to review it and do what it takes, and they, they changed, keep it and put Fada'il al-A'mal. What's Fada'il al-A'mal? Fada'il al-A'mal, they have to be in the deen of Allah. Allah, he's the one who said to us, this is a good deed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's the one who said in authentic hadith, this is a good deed. 
Not people just come bring a fabricated hadith and tell you this is a good deed. When a people gather together in a circle and all of them say la ilaha illa a hundred times, huh? then that's a good deed. Says who? Did the Prophet ﷺ did this? No. Did the companions after him get together and say la ilaha illa all of them hundred one times each one? We don't have no narration. So how is going to be fada'il al-a'mal? How is going to be from the righteous deeds? If it's not in the book of Allah, it's not in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallam, nobody from the sahaba know about it. How is it going to be a good deed? So it's not. So it's very important, ya khwan, for us to remember these things. Now you learn the tawheed, your aqidah, the fiqh. But you have to learn about these people. They're dangerous, especially in our time. Many are these deviant groups who are causing. Look at the fitna now that the Muslims went through in Libya, in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in this, name it, Algeria, Morocco, Gambia, Senegal, in some, may Allah preserve and protect the Muslims, I mean, in Sudan, and in this, and Somalia, in Ethiopia, and may Allah protect the Muslims, the believers. But a lot of chaos happened because people are being influenced by these ideologies. Now let's go do it. You do what? Oh, now go bring everybody in the streets. We're going to remove this ruler. Says, did Allah says in the Quran, bring all your family when there is a ruler, oppressor, bring all your family and meet after Jumu'ah and remove him? No, we don't have an ayah. Do we have one hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said to us, look, whenever there is a tyrant ruler, oppressor, taking the money, don't give you anything, putting people in jail, get all your families, wives, children, grandmothers, everybody, and remove him in the streets? We don't have a hadith like that. Rather, the ayahs, the text, and the hadith, they, they actually tells us the opposite. Be patient. Don't go against them because it brings a lot of evil, a lot of chaos. No, be patient. Ask Allah to remove that. Like Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he says in his time, when the people, they went against Al-Hajjaj, and many, thousands and hundreds, Dozens of thousands of Muslims, good, some of them, good scholars, they died, yeah, they were killed. In those who in the wars, those they were killed by Al-Hajjaj himself after the war, finding one by one. Hassan al-Basri, he told him, he says, no, don't go against him, be patient. And then after that, he says this beautiful statement, he says, if the people, they follow the narrations and they were patient, then the Nasr come only from Allah. Nasr come from Allah, victory come from Allah. But since they entrusted their, they trusted their souls, Allah leave them to the souls. Allah leave them to their souls and to their blades. You see? So let's say Allah has salam wa al-afiyah. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslimun kabira.